get started. Um, <clears throat> so after you have categorized your different types of projects, then you need to use uh, several kinds of selection methods so you can decide which uh, projects to select for your portfolio. And there's different approaches to this. There can be a financial approach or non-financial. And usually there's a combination of both. So there's some factors, financial factors, that are important. But also, you cannot just go by this alone. You need to consider what is st of the strategic in interest to the company. And so there's uh, also several multi-weighted scoring models as different ways of evaluating which criteria are important for the project selection. So first, we talk about the financial models. Uh, one of the <coughs> simplest approaches is that the payback model. So if you have a certain investment on a project, it looks at the payback over the years, and those with a shorter payback period are considered more de desirable than those with a longer payback period. And it emphasizes cash flows, and um, but this payback method is, has a limited value and that it ignores the value of money. And it assumes that cash inflows for investment uh, for an investment period and not beyond the investment period. So it only it doesn't it only considers when the project is active, not that it can continue to make money afterwards. And then um, it does not consider profitability. So again, if we go to an example, because there's no example in the. In here, um, that's not this one. Okay, uh, basically, there's two things. Um, uh, question number two on the exercises. So question number two says, there are two new software projects are proposed to a young startup company. The Alpha project will cost 150000 to develop and is expected to have an annual net cash flow of 40000 uh, The beta project will uh, cost 200000 and is expected to have an annual net cash flow of 50000 And the company is very concerned about the cash flow and using the payback method, which project is better from a ca cash flow standpoint and why. So if this happens to be one of your questions in the exercises also. So this is exercise number one. And you can see that it's actually the first question on your required exercise. So if we could just, uh, if you could just do this now. Um, does, it, does anyone know how to do the, this? Yeah, just give it a try and then we'll go over it.
Nancy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so how many would pick the Alpha project? Okay, how many picked the Omega project? How many have not picked a project? <laughs> I only saw like three hands. <laughs> okay, <coughs> but uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, but the Alpha project has a cost of 150,000, and then uh, like a annual cash flow of 40,000. So that means year one, 40,000. Year two, 40,000. Year three, 40,000. And then you have uh, you have 12, 120,000. Year four, it's going to be 1,600. So <coughs> that means that by the time you get, you have this get, has a payback period of. 3.75 years. Project number, beta project has um, 200,000 outlay and a, a cash flow of 50,000 per year. So you can see that that's going to take four years to get paid back. And that means that the alpha project gets the payback faster than the beta project. The alpha project takes 3.75 years, and the beta project takes four years. So <coughs> according to the payback uh, procedure, you should pick A. You should pick alpha. Okay. So this one you have done. <laughs> and I just wanted to point out that some of the questions have answers in the back of the book. And the answers are in the back of, at least they're in the back of uh, edition six. And this one happened to be in the back of the book. But not all of these are from that subset that have answers. Okay. Uh, let's go back. Okay, so um, payback model is one financial model, and another is uh, net present value model. So it says manage uses management's uh, minimum desired rate of return or discount rate to compute the present value of all uh, net ca net cash inflows. So you have the positive net present value is the project meets the minimum desired rate of return and is eligible for future consideration. Negative, the project is rejected. So when you compute this value, if it's a positive value, you can consider it. And the more positive it is, the better it is. And if it's negative, you should reject it. So the company basically picks what they, ex they want as their desired rate of return or their discount rate. And it doesn't necessarily mean that this is correct. It just means that this is what they have guessed at or what they, they think that they want. So um, that's also something that's subject to change. In this uh, formula, the way they have <coughs> presented this is a bit odd because they have I as the initial investment. And they have I plus uh, this. But I would naturally think of this as this minus I, because you minus your initial investment. But here they say, since it is an outflow, the number will be negative. So they wrote it this way. So I've seen it other places where this is here, and then it's minus I. It's the same thing. Uh, the net cash inflow for the period is here, and the period is T. And it, um, and then it re the required rate of return is K, which is the discount rate. OK, so that would be, if it was 20%, it would be 0.2. OK. Um, so it's, uh, it's kind of strange that they call, uh, they call K is the rate of return, which is basically the interest rate or the discount rate. Okay. Uh, this is some an example I just stuck in, and it's a bit hard to read it. So this says, compute the net present value of this investment project. It has an initial cost of 6000 It has uh, the life of the asset is six years. 
Uh, the annual cash flow is uh, 2,200. Uh, we can ignore the salvage value. And then the rate, required rate of return is 20%. And then um, the annual cash flow uh, is, is computed over six years. So the present uh, value of the cash flow is 7317. And then the initial investment now is uh, zero. And using a 20% uh, discount rate, and it has a net present value of 1317. And so, uh, <coughs> if you compute this, uh, should the equipment be purchased according to the analysis? And it's yes, because this is a positive number, and uh, that means that the project has a rate of return that is higher than the minimum rate of return required by management. And we have um, <coughs> the minimum required rate of return is used to discount the cash inflow to its present value and is therefore also known as the discount rate. Okay, let's see what we have. So if we look at exercise uh, 2.5, on page 51. Wait, this is, is that better? Um, let's just go back to that. So this is like uh, it's not there. It's not one of our exercises. I'm just going to close that. Okay, so this is exercise uh, chapter two, number five, and it's on page uh, 51, in edition six. And it says, you're the head of the project selection team at Simsox. Your team is considering three different projects based on the past history, and with a, a, a the SimSox expects a rate of return of 20%, and the financial advisor predicts inflation to remain at 3% into the foreseeable future. Give the following information for each project. Uh, which one would you choose? And then um, which one should SimSox prioritize first? And do they need to look at other projects? Meaning, do, does any of them, ha do they all have negative net present value, then you have to look for something else. If one of them has positive, then you have at least one candidate. If they have two that are positive, then the one that has the more positive is the one you should choose. So there's three projects here. And you should compute a net present value calculation for that. And uh, let's see. This is also uh, there's an answer for this in the back, but you maybe you should try to compute the net present value for at least one of the projects before looking at what they did in the back. And you should use the formula that they gave you. <gasps> So the formula for net present value is on page 37.
don't know if it, it's probably a bit much to ask you to do the calculation in the back now, but I can sh show you that this is the calculation that's done, or the example that's done in the chapter itself. So if we have <coughs> um, the initial cost of 700,000, there's two projects, and, and then these are the inflows each year, and then this is the net inflow. And then um, the, the Excel, uh, Microsoft Excel, will compute the net present value uh, using, uh, you can't see the lines here, but you can see it in the book. Uh, so the cell is B6 and C9 and G9. And this computes a net present value of 89.554. And this one produces a negative net present value. So in this book, there is also, um, there's different numbers that are used. And it has a, for project A, it has a negative value of 54,235. And project B has a negative net present value of negative 31263. And then the, so in the book on chapter and page 38, you have project A is desirable and can be considered because it has a positive net present value of 54,235. And in the book, there is a um, negative value for project B, and so that would be re rejected. In this case, this is also positive and would be accepted, and this is negative and would be rejected. And uh, additionally, they have here, they have calculated the payback period for these. This has a payback period of 3.1 years, and this has 3.6 years. <coughs> okay. So, it, so in the payback calculations, uh, you can accept them both because they have payback period of less than five years, which is what they wanted. But in the net present value calculation, you would accept A and you would reject B. Okay. And this is using the formula that's up there on page, it's also on page 37. Uh, if you do the one in the back of the book, I'm a bit um, confused. I I'm wondering if some of these numbers in the back should be negative numbers, because I didn't do the calculation myself. So on, um, let's see. The solutions to the exercise uh, five is on page 627. And they say that you should consider the SimSox, uh, should consider Voyagers, and reject the other two projects. But from what I can see, they look like they're all positive. But I think maybe there's a there's a typing mistake here, and one of these, and one is positive, and the other two are negative. The first two are negative. The first two are negative. Okay. But they didn't show that <laughs> in the in the solution. But it, they should be. If they're negative, then you reject them. And if it's positive, you accept it. And it's just a typing mistake or a printing mistake <coughs> in the book. Hmm? Do you see something? No. Okay. But anyway, you get the idea. And. Um, We'll probably go a lot faster if you use Excel than if you try to do it by hand. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So we move on. We don't have so much time left. Um, but the, uh, the thing is that um, projects usually use other types of scoring models. And there's two types of selection criteria models that are, um, you can use a checklist model, or you can use a multi-weighted uh, scoring model. Um, so if you were 
to use a, um, a sample of questions that you would use in a checklist model. They haven't uh, put up a transparency here, but on page, uh, let me see, uh, on page 40 of your book, in uh, the box that is exhibit 2-4, there's an example of questions uh, that can be asked and to see if it passes, the project passes on all of those questions. The model that is uh, the multi-weighted scoring model is the picture that's here, and that's um, the project screening matrix. And so you would go through different projects and see which um, gets the highest score uh, based on the weights that were attributed to each of the characteristics. So you're using a common set of characteristics for across the um, different projects to evaluate the projects next, compare them with each other, and decide which is the most um, appropriate. So we have um, the, an issue like strategic fit is very important, and it gets a rating of a weight of three, where we have something like reduces the defects to less than 1% gets one. Maybe that has to do with quality. Maybe that should be higher. But it's up to some management group to decide what are the importance of each of these criteria. And then it's more independent of what each, uh, each section wants. It becomes more objective rather than subjective for each management. And then when you compare projects across each of these criteria, you get an objective weighting of which ones are most important to the company. And it looks like uh, this one would be selected in this case. So let's see. Yes, yeah, so uh, they also point out it's the same table um, in, in uh, the edition six on page 41. And they point out the, the using the weighted criteria, the pri priority team derives weighted total points for each project. For example, the project five has the highest value of 102. Uh, the project two has the lowest value of 27. So if there's only resources available for one project, it would go to project five. If there's a resources available to three projects, it would go to five, one, and three. Or maybe in project N, so that's counted. So um, you get the idea. Mm -hmm. And I think one of your questions in the exercise has to do with using these models as well. <coughs> so applying the selection model, you need first decide on how, uh, what type of classification it is. Is it strategic operations? If it's compliant, you're going to do it anyway. So then out of the ones that are strategic and operational, you have to also then apply a selection model. Uh, selecting the model, you apply the weight scoring model to bring projects to closer to the organization's strategic goals. And the idea might be to reduce the number of wasteful projects, identify the proper goals for the projects, and help everyone to understand why those projects were selected. So you don't have, later on, you have buy-in and the people accept that these projects were uh, have resources con that are assigned to them. There are different ways to get project proposals. Sometimes the propo uh, proposals come from management. Sometimes organizations send out requests for proposals and get uh, different contractors or vendors to submit proposals to be able to do a project within a certain uh, time or with certain resources. And uh, ranking proposals and selection of pro projects prioritize. Prioritizing requires discipline, accountability, responsibility, constraints, reduced flexibility, and loss of power. So meaning that uh, everything is upfront and open. You get to see the process, and that nothing is hidden about which projects get uh, selected. 
so it becomes something that you can go back to and then say, ah, I see why this was selected over the other project. And loss of power means that no individuals have political power, but it's based on these uh, objective criteria. So managing the portfolio, um, uh, there can be a senior management that decides, um, but also you might have a project uh, team that has uh, responsibilities for the project. So this is just an example. Uh, I think chapter seven talks about risk analysis, so we're not going to talk about that now. So senior management provide guidance in selecting the criteria, decide how to balance the resources among projects. And the priority team publishes the priority of every project, ensures the project selection process is open and free, and assesses the, reassesses the organizational goals and priorities. So the basic idea is when you select this group of projects that you're going to support, that it contributes again back to the mission and the objectives of the organization. So um, this is this is on page 46. It's the b basic project uh, screening process. You have an idea. Um, you have some data collection and do some sort of financial analysis. Uh, there may be uh, evaluation of the project criteria, maybe using this multi-score model. And then you might have a priority team that evaluates the portfolio based on several criteria. Um, and then they either accept and assign who's managing and, the, and who's working with the project. And they also uh, obtain resources for the project or hold resources uh, that are going to be assigned to the project and that they can't be used for other things. And then those that are rejected are just not part of this. So it's basically, uh, once it's accepted, you need to prioritize what's going to be used on it and you need to hold those resources away from being used, multitasking and using resources that belong to other projects. Uh, this is just a way of um, putting projects in a portfolio and classifying them. And it's kind of a, a nice way to look at things. You have net present value gives success, commercial potential, and the technical feasibility, how easy is it to implement. And these are um, uh, bread and butter ones are uh, technically um, uh, they're easy, very easy to implement, but maybe they don't have very much strategic value to them. So, but you just have to do them anyway. And then the white elephants are things that maybe they had some value one time, but they don't really have uh, given any value now. And um, uh, they can be uh, not easy to implement. So you shouldn't do these. And then the oysters, are they have they can give a lot of value and they're easy um, um, they're e technically easy to implement so these you should do and then uh, also the ones that uh, give a lot of value commercial poten potential but are technically difficult to implement these are maybe future technologies and they can give future value so you probably should invest in them, but maybe you can't reach and do them. So these are probably the ones you want to pursue the most. These are ones you have to do, and these are ones you don't want to do. OK, so here's a summary of that. So you have um, bread and butter projects involve uh, evolutionary improvements that are to the current products. These are kind of, uh, we have existing products, we make these small improvements and we need to, they 
give us our basic income for the company. Uh, the pearls are revolutionary commercial advances using proven technology. So these are the ones you really want to pursue. And then um, uh, the oysters involve technological breakthroughs with high commercial payoffs. Uh, so these are sometimes more difficult because they have their new technologies, but they have good payoffs. So these you would like to be able to do. And then the uh, white elephants, uh, they maybe have showed promise, but they're no longer possible. They're just expensive to maintain and don't give you payback. So the basic terms that were in this chapter, we didn't really look at balance scorecard so much. But this is uh, looking at multiple criteria, implementation gap, net present value, payback, organizational politics, priority systems, priority teams, project por portfolio, project screening matrix. Sacred, sacred cow has to do with uh, politics and being having your pet projects, uh, strategic management process. So the important part is to have this process for uh, identifying the projects that are good to support from being able to select those projects based on the company's missions and objectives. Okay. So that's it. Chapter 2. Okay, so this should give you a good start so you can start working on your exercises, exercise number one. And um, I think there's a couple of questions also from chapter three, but you could at least get started on it. Okay, that's it, we're finished.